Hi everybody! Thanks for joining my vlog today. I have a really fun project to share with you. I'm working on some Christmas gifts today and today I'm making these little sofa pillows. They look like a little Dachshund dog. They are made with two different colors of fabric. It's stuffed. I tuck it under my neck while I watch TV and honestly it's super comfortable and as you can see the cute factor is just over the top. I can't wait to show you step by step. Let's get started. So first we're going to start with this pattern here. You can see the pattern has four pieces. The dog's body right here, the dog's underside, this is the head gusset that gives the dog shape, and the ear. Once we've assembled this, you're going to end up with a finished project that looks more or less like this. I chose some different fabrics for this based on what I thought would make nice projects. You can see I chose some color coordinating things. By the end of this, I didn't use all the fabrics here. I did sub a few of them out, but generally I used the fabrics dark gray, light gray, dark gray, light gray. I ended up putting a navy blue under this green color here, and everything that I chose was intended with it matching people's living rooms and just trying to choose um, neutral shades that would go to everyone's living room quite nicely. So ultimately, here's our fabric selections. Next step you want to do is you want to be ironing up all your fabrics nice and smooth. The cleaner and flatter your fabrics are before you cut, the more accurate your cutting will be. Next, you're going to pin everything into place like this. Follow the grain lines of your fabric. You're going to want to be as straight as possible. I did turn some of those ears at times to make good use of my fabric, but ultimately follow your grain lines and the project's going to behave the best when you sew it. Cut everything out as accurately and neatly as possible. Here you can see I purposely lined up the dog so that the nose ended on a black end. Once this dog is cut out, that little nose is going to show up as if it was quite on purpose, which is nice. Once again, always be careful. Use fine scissors like I'm using here for some of the finer parts to reach easier. Now you can see we have all our dogs cut out. We have the dog bodies, undersides, front and backs of the ears, and the head gussets. Everything is assembled here so we can get ready for our next steps of sewing. The next thing that you want to do is prepare your ears first. Open up the cutout ears so that the right sides of the fabric are down and the wrong side is up. Then you're going to take the pre-cut pieces of your interfacing. This is fusible interfacing. So what this is, feel it rough on one side, smooth on the other side. The rough side is the glue. Put that face down so that it is in contact with the fabric that you're going to press. Continue in this manner until you've laid out interfacing on every ear. Do you see my fingers here are counting out five seconds, basically? I find that turning the steam off and holding, um, pressing and interfacing like this for about five seconds is all you need to make it stick. Now you can see we have the ears all cut out. Everyone is lined up and ready to go and have their backing fabrics assembled. Now we pin it together. We put the right sides of the ears together, of the backing of the ear and the top of the ear. You're going to have an interfacing side on the outside right now because it's not yet sewn. Pre-pin all the ears for all the dogs you're doing if you're batch sewing like I am. Next, we're going to get the machine ready. Take a couple of moments, load up your bobbin with the threads that you want. And get your machine threaded up and ready to go. Next, you're going to sew all of these ears quarter inch all around the edges just like this. Repeat for as many ears you have cut out for how many dogs you're sewing. Then you're going to clip the curves in regular intervals like this, coming close to the seam of the fabric, of your stitching that is, but don't actually clip right to the stitching. You don't want the project to come apart. Next, you're going to take that ear that you've sewn and clipped and you're going to turn it so that it is right side out. Simply work this by turning it out with your hand and then using your fingers, you can finger press out all those edges until you get a nice rounded shaped ear. Once you have it fully turned out, it should look like this. One ear ready to go. Next, you're going to press those ears out so that you can maintain the smooth flat shape with the rounded ear shape. Once again, continue for as many ears as you're sewing for however many dogs you're doing. 
Our next step is going to be marking the match points for our next part of the sewing project. Lay the pattern back on top of the garment items and put the pins through those black match points, just like you see me doing here. Next, take a piece of tailor's chalk and where those pin marks are, this is a nice little seamstress trick, you're going to mark off the fabric at the pin points. I'm going to show you a little more with this larger dog body part here. Lay the pattern on top, put your pins through those black markup match up points, just like that, just the top ones there. Turn this over, take your tailor's chalk and rub it where the pin comes out so that you get a little blue dot everywhere that there's a pin sticking through. By doing this, you're going to have your marks the same on each side, which is a nice little seamstress trick I learned when I took some sewing school classes. Now fold that paper back and rub that chalk where the pin is coming out on the other side. Basically, you're going to have the identical matched chalk marks on either side of both parts of the cutout dog. This makes assembly so much easier. Now we're going to line up the ears. Place the ear on one side of the dog. Wrong side down like that, right side of the fabric up so it looks nicely matched. Then you're going to place this over top of the original pattern where you'll see those markings for the ears. Line this up so that it's nice and straight, pin it into place. Next, you're going to match the second piece of fabric for the other half of the dog on top of the first one that you just pinned. Take your ear, place it on top, and use your fingers to feel around the edge and line this up so it's perfectly straight with the other one. You should have two pinned equal sides like this. See how the ears are lined up? Wrong side down, right side up. You're ready to begin sewing again. For this part of the project, you're going to attach the ear sewing just a 1 8 of an inch seam, so as small as possible, because the rest of the project is sewn with quarter inch seams. Really you're just tacking the dog's ears into place here until they can be seamed the rest of the way. Now that you have that done, the next step is to add the head gusset. You can see the ear is sewn into place with that little 1 8 of an inch seam. Do you see my chalk mark there? My thumb touched it. The other one you can see there, I held it up. Take the head gusset, fold it in half, and just finger press it so that you have a gentle marking of the center of the fabric. Now you're gonna pin this into place marking the ends of a quarter inch from that tip to those chalk marks that you put into place on the dog. Try your best to center the head gusset over the center part of the ear. I find it easier to pin the two chalk ends first to the tips of that gusset and then start to even it out from there. Pin it carefully. The more accurately you pin it, the straighter and more even your work will be. There's one side pinned. We're going to stitch all along there. This footage is sped up a little, of course, but here you can see me simply stitching down the first half of the head gusset. Now when you turn that out, you see the beginning of the dog head shape starting. Now you lay the second half of the dog on top of the first half, line up all your fabric so it's super even, and then feel with your fingers and make sure those ears are straight. Then you're going to begin to pin the second half of the head gusset into place. Working again on those ends, you're going to want to do your best. Use that chalk point there that I'm pointing at with the pin. Press it into the corner of where the other seam was and very carefully pin it. Do your very best to not pinch the ends of the fabric. Your goal here is to stitch the second half of the head gusset into place without pinching any of the fabric. But if you pinch it, don't worry, I'm going to show you what to do. This piece is all pinned and ready to go. You can see I'm lining that up exactly to where the other stitch was. This is pinned and ready to sew. Here we go.
Now here it is stitched and you can see the head gusset is in place. Let's turn it out and see what it looks like. You can see the dog's head taking shape here quite nicely. So now once you have the head gusset sewn in place, check it like this and make sure nothing is pinched or overlapped. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to match those other chalk dots here and begin to stitch top, the top part of the dog closed. Fold that little piece of the head gusset out of the way and pinch the fabric just like you see me doing here in order to pin that and do your very best to not pinch the fabric while you sew it. Honestly everyone, this is probably the trickiest part of this whole sewing project. If you can get through attaching this head gusset, the rest is pretty easy. Repeat the same process here at the back of the head gusset, making sure that you're not pinching any excess fabric. Now you can see the dog is all pinned up and ready to sew. And once again, we got a little bit of sped up footage here. You can see we're just attaching the two top halves of the dog together from one chalk point to the tip of the head gusset, and then from the back of the head gusset to the end of the dog. When I turned it out, I did discover I had pinched some fabric, the very thing we're trying to avoid, but it does happen. Simply take your seam ripper like this and gently work out the extra stitches. Double check it. If you have to restitch a bit, you do. And then you can trim off any excess threads, press it out with your fingers like this, and make sure you got a smooth connection point. If you haven't already, finish sewing the back half of the dog just like this. You're going to stitch that all the way around the back of the body and the back of the tail and stop at those chalk chalk points that are at the back of the dog. So once again, just a little more footage here showing you how we go around that tail. Take your time, stick to your quarter inch edge. The smoother your sewing is, the nicer the shape your dog will be. Do you see I have my pin turned sideways there? That's where my chalk point is and I knew exactly where to stop. Now that we have that part of the dog sewn, we're attaching the base end of the dog. Line this up exactly. Once again, your neat, tidy cutting is going to pay off here because you're going to be able to line everything up and pin it, starting at those chalk points. Here's side one pinned. Repeat the same on side two. Line up your points, pin it all carefully into place. And where those chalk points are, you're going to pin that as closely as you can without overlapping, overlapping or puckering the fabric. to sew. Run this along the machine on both sides. You'll have to stitch one side first. Once you have that done, then where those chalk points are, where the ends meet, you can flip it to the other side and stitch again. Now the sides are attached, we're closing the belly. What you're going to do is using that chalk mark that you had down the middle, you're going to pin this. Do you see how my pins are running from the tail? And then here, the opening where you're going to stuff it, and then pins all the way to the end. Stitch this into place as you see going on here, making sure that you leave that belly open so that you have a place to turn the dog and stuff the dog. When I do the ends here, it's a little squared off and I just angle it up so that it is nice and smooth. Clip this little corner on the back of the dog's legs here before you turn it out. Otherwise, the fabric's going to pucker a little more than you would prefer. Now turn your project right side out. There's our dog, ready to stuff. And here's our little friend, Skye. She has her little baby dog as well. Here's all the dogs ready to go. They're flat, they're stitched, awaiting their stuffing so they can fairly nearly come to life. Stuff the dog from the nose to the tail. You're gonna wanna pack it a little more firmly than you might imagine, but it should still have a comfortable give. Once you have this ready, you're just gonna whip stitch that belly closed. Take your time, make your stitches close together and neat. Here's just some more footage of me stitching another dog closed. 
it did take a little while to stitch 10 dogs closed. Here is a finished product. Doggy, wrong side of the ear, different color. Belly side, the same color. All the top of the body and the ears all matching. Doesn't he look handsome? All these are ready to go now. They're gonna make lovely Christmas gifts and memories for everyone. Thanks so much everyone for watching my video today. I'm glad you could learn how to do this dog with me. I'll include the pattern download for you in the links below. I'm making the pattern available for free. If you want to try this dog with me, post in the comments how it went for you or send me a link on your Instagram. I'd love to see what you've done. All my social media links will be in the post below. That's it for today, everyone. Thanks for coming by.